that. So let me show you what all the hoopla is about. cutting bit in the drill, cut it to the length. I didn't have a wire brush. I went ahead and scored the ends with uh, a file. Now I'll wipe it down with acetone. Quite a bit of dirt on that. The wire brush is supposed to remove uh, the surface corrosion and prep the surface. The acetone is to clean those out. I think I did that. So. Let me show you what all the hoopla is about. So plan is basically making a U-bracket to fit over the outboard mount and allow the auxiliary engine to clamp on alongside of it. Uh, so I've got this angle aluminum that I just cut and uh, as an experiment I'm going to try these aluminum brazing rods to actually lay the bead and what and raise these two pieces of aluminum together. Although the angle sizes are different, they are the exact same thickness of material. So this should work. So I've got a torch, I've got the rods, I've got it set up, and I've prepped and cleaned the surfaces. We're going to see if these brazing rods work. This little torch just may not be enough. Everything I've seen, they're using the big torches. I may have to get a big torch. Yeah. All right, so as I found out, that little torch just wasn't doing it. So I went and got a big dog. And uh, we'll see how this does it.
Well, it definitely heated it up. It worked so well, it was actually puddling and, and going off. So this is really, really sloppy. But I'm going to give it a chance to cool and see how it worked out. All right, I uh, actually let it cool just a little bit. It's only been a couple minutes, but uh, it's, let's, let's see what we got here. Because this end is nice and cool, but, oh yeah, it's holding it quite nicely. Uh, remember, this joint really isn't too load-bearing, uh, but, I mean, uh, I'm putting a little force on it here actually using it like a lever. I've got my fingertips up in between. And it's not separating. I do plan to throw another bead on the uh, the outside as well. Give it as much. But it's... Yeah, I've got a good quarter, almost half an inch worth of separation here at the end. And it's not giving. So, looks like this might actually work. So, I'm going to uh, throw it back in the vise here. Uh, make sure it's level this time. And uh, go ahead and finish laying this line. And then we'll let it completely cool off and see what we're dealing with then. So, I slathered it on extremely thick, but towards the end, just as an experiment, I ran a single bead. So this is the single bead, and then it gets real ugly but I was slathering it on extra thick uh, this is the underside so that stuff won't be seen but this is the experimental part so if this don't work I'll make it look like that but I think it'll work because that end which was already done was holding it together for all of this and then once it cools off and I flip it over this single bead is kind of what I'm going to do on the top. So I used one and a half sticks. Once you get it up to temperature, man, it is something else. These big globs like here and here and down there are not from my carelessness. This little back and forth part is me. Um, that is because it's not sitting exactly level so when I was working here it was actually running down and pooling up so but we'll see how we'll see how it looks after it fully cools down all right so it's fully cooled down um, and I've even tried to lead to lay the beads on the outside. Uh, one of the things I discovered with that is that the material gets so hot that while I was trying to lay the beads, it actually started pooling. Uh, it would bleed through and a giant puddle formed on the outside. So I guess that means I got full penetration. So I didn't lay the full bead, uh, but when that fully cooled, I actually laid the piece on the ground and smacked it a couple times with a five pound hand sledge and there are a couple dents, let me see if that shows up on the camera, here and here, uh, yeah, 
right there, uh, where the hammer impacted and it didn't damage the seam at all. So you have to remember that with this piece, it's going to lay on top of the bracket that the outboard sits on just to give a spot to clamp the small electric outboard, the auxiliary engine, onto. So the, the forces involved are going to be trying to bend this angle aluminum along its angle. This seam is just to hold these two pieces together uh, to give it uh, a little bit of rigidity. But the, the forces involved are going to be trying not trying to bend the seam, but trying to bend the pieces. So it should be more than adequate for its purpose. All Overall, I'm very happy with those aluminum brazing rods. Uh, they were relatively easy to use once you have the appropriate torch. Heat is your friend with these things. But I, I wanted to have them on board because it allows you to fabricate things out of aluminum, but it also would allow me to repair uh, like the solar arch and, and all the aluminum things. My mast is aluminum, so uh, it, it gives me an ability to affect at least emergency repairs or to make things uh, that I can use. Uh, so, very, very happy with it. Uh, I, I hope the video has uh, taught some people about this stuff. The, uh, the torch can even use the standard little camping propane bottles. So, um, you know, for like camping stoves. So they're, they're real, uh, easy to use, uh, handy tool to have, especially for heating things up, uh, bolt fixtures and, and things like that. But now it also gives me the ability to fabricate things. So I'm extraordinarily happy with the entire setup. Uh, and it looks like it works. So uh, the next thing will be to install this on the boat and install the motor on it and see where we are from there. But that's a video for another time. Hey, thanks for watching. As always, please subscribe, hit the bell notification if you want to know of new content, and may the winds always be at your back.